Now, one of the things that y'all will experience, and keep on asking questions while I'm playing with this one, that you will experience is vapor travel. What we're going to do is demonstrate that, and again, people will talk about an explosion occurring when it may or may not be more than just a, a bit of ignition. What we're going to do is put a little bit of gasoline on this cloth. Paper will ignite. We know that. <laughs> We didn't have any cloth today. We're down here the first time doing this. And we had it going. And what you will watch is coming down here to the, the vapor, or the vapor trail should come down. Typically, the first time you don't see it as nicely as you do the second time. But you see how that pushed out up at the very top? And I watched the vapor trail coming down. You can actually see it coming down the tube, and right there it goes back. And it tends to push the fire out. What you've had up in there is confined space. When it heats up, the, the air in that area heats up, then it starts to push the vapors back out. Now, that last one didn't get as strong because now the vapors are tending to dissipate, and we actually have a fire burning up in there. mostly just the, the cloth that was burning. That first time or two, the second time probably was the better one where it pushed out in there. You will hear your employees if they have a fire say, oh there was an explosion, the fire just literally blew out. And that's right because it's coming from a confined space. Some of the things we see in the industry are people leave open containers out and the vapors will travel somewhere and get an ignition source. You have a static discharge that occurs <coughs> today, but not any other day in the month. And if the vapors are at the right place at the right time, bam, you have a fire. And they're standing in a puddle of whatever the vapors are. Those, these vapors tended to travel downward. If you have natural gas or something else in the building, it's going to tend to go upward. And that's where your emissions are going to occur. Hydrogen do a lot of the same things. Uh, as Steve was talking about, hydrogen incident or flash fire is much like this just traveling back and forth. It's not a real hard fire unless you can find it and then it can be explosive. And we've actually seen that in chemical reactions where it's had one that, that literally blew up a reactor one time and, and there was nothing but hydrogen being released and went back into the building. Hydrogen has a lower ignition point than gasoline and other stuff. It's not necessarily a lower ignition point. Keep in mind, ignition temperature and the, uh, the can change moving up and down. But once you have the ignition temperature measured, okay, it's just how fast does that exp that occur and how confined is the hydrogen? How fast does the flame front move across the material? And hydrogen can be very fast, just like you saw up on the, uh, the Hindenburg when it was burning. But it really didn't blow up in the Hindenburg. It just burned up very, very quickly. Whereas, and gasoline does the same thing as long as it's not confined. But so I know y'all have never done this, but people throwing gasoline on a fire or to start a fire and they, they let it uh, build up with the vapors, and then all of a sudden it goes cold. <coughs> That's just the, the outward pushing of the, the ex, ex, rapid expansion uh, of the uh, uh, air and it's causing that whooshing sound to get out. Now, if that's put inside of a building, or inside of a confined area of any kind. You can see the lid flip up, all kinds of things occur. Typically, uh, gas fumes escaping from when you're refilling your car will tend to come out and travel downward? They tend, typically do. Um, and, and that's one of the things that we found in doing the, the static with cars is that you'll have an area that's about this big around outside of a standard car that can ignite where the vapor atmosphere is, is correct. And now that can be about this big around, it could be this long and that big around, just depending on how the air currents are. If you have a static discharge while you're in that flammable range for gasoline, which is fairly narrow, about 6%, 10%, I can't remember, it's 2.5 to 7.5, about 5 or 6% uh, mixture with air, then you can have the ignition. And as Steve was talking about, the worst thing that anybody does with a gasoline nozzle is pull it out. 